Good morning and welcome to Jew in the City Speaks with your host, Allison Josephs, also known as Jew in the City. Um, we'd like to follow the calendar and bring in speakers that are relevant to what's going on in the world. And Yom Hazikaron is uh, upon us now. Um, you know, the state of Israel is a miraculous, uh, you know, just place to be, state of being. Um, I think in some ways, um, the questions that our generation has in terms of, you know, challenges that the Torah presents and how parts of it seem to not work so easily with parts of modern society, um, you know, how rational the world is today and how does faith fit into that. I think that the modern state of Israel, um, we have merited to be able to see that come about to have be an answer almost to those questions of faith that people might have because even for myself when there's issues that I grapple with, I take a look at this extraordinary, you know, thing that came about um, just a few decades ago and how much has been accomplished um, and I, I feel in awe. Um, and, you know, for Yom Hazikaron, um, it, it's, you know, a, a time that we consider uh, and, and remember the soldiers that fell um, in protecting this land that was given to us, I believe in a miraculous way. Um, and it's sort of in keeping with our mission of trying to highlight Orthodox Jews from unexpected places doing unexpected things. Um, we're super excited to speak today to uh, the CEO of Nachal Haredi. Um, Yassi Levy, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today. I'm happy to be here to speak about the soldiers and the Haredi community. So um, if you could, um, I guess, tell us a little bit first about your background and then what Nachal Haredi is for any of our listeners that aren't familiar with it. Okay, so I grew up in Haredi community here in Israel. And uh, after um, I was I was in Yeshiva, like uh, everyone, and after that I felt that I did something different. So I thought that maybe I can uh, draft to the army. Uh, I didn't know anything about the army, so I started from... Uh, uh, from the position that I don't know anything about the army. My brother was in Ponovich and another brother in, in Kol Torah. This is the best issue about in the Haredi community. Uh, but I, I decided to do something different. Uh, I started the army uh, in 2009. I served as, as a fighter in Netzach uh, Luna, in Nachal Haredi uh, Battalion. Uh, after that, I uh, went to a commander's course and uh, the officer's course. Um, I was in uh, Netzach Luna for five years. Uh, at the end, um, I was a uh, deputy um, commander of the battalion. And I finished the army, so it's a, it's a, a new world that uh, I get uh, after uh, 20 years in the Haredi community. I, I understand what is uh, in the, the Israeli society and uh, everything here in, in in the country, and I understand that it's very uh, uh, value for me to serve in the army after a couple of years. It's uh, uh, I, I feel the the army it's, it's something that can change the everything in the in the person that goes to the army, and uh, we're talking about Yom Zikaron. I have uh, one of my soldiers that served in my class that uh, died uh, in the army in the service, so it's in my blood today. Everything that's happening in, in, in Israel and even in the Haredi community, all of the, the communities. Can you give us some background on um, sort of wh what Nachal Haredi is, um, when it was founded, why it was founded? Nachal Haredi, it's, it's uh, started like a solution to the guys that left the yeshiva. We're talking about the Haredi community, all of the Haredi community, it's, there is a strategy to keep everything, everyone in the yeshiva because we want to keep the Torah and we want to still uh, keep uh, the Haredi community as a group. Um, but we can see in every community that there is some people that don't want to learn Torah all of the day. So there is two Rabbonim, Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Chaim and Rabbi David Fuchs, that came to the army and said, let's open a Haredi company, Haredi unit. The army said, no way, the Haredi community <laughs> will be again. The, Wait, what what year was this? Do you, are you familiar with uh, approximately what year this happened? Yeah, no, I was uh, <laughs> maybe eight years old. Oh, wow. uh, when it started, yeah, we're talking about uh, 20 years ago, more than 20 years. I'm, I'm 30 years uh, old, so okay. it's uh, when I was uh, 10 years old. Okay, so yeah. IDF says, no way, we don't want a Haredi unit. So, yeah, so uh, they, they started to open a, a, a Haredi community, Haredi company, it's mm -hmm. called in the army. Mm -hmm. um, all of the Haredi community was against uh, the move, and uh, there is a lot of problems at the beginning, but after two, three years, and we're talking about today, after 20 years, 
you can see the, the start, uh, they started with 30 boys. We're talking about today more than uh, 3,000 boys in the army today and more than 14,000 veterans. It's a lot. Amazing. Yeah. So what um, what does Nakhafa already offer that the regular, I guess there's a two part question. What does it offer that the regular army doesn't offer? And um, you know, from the Dati Lumi community, sort of the modern Orthodox uh, for the Americans that need that translation, um, what does Nakha Haredi offer that either the secular Israeli or the modern Orthodox Dati Lumi Israeli um, might not necessarily need or want? Um, how, how does Nakha Haredi differ? First of all, it's very important to say Nakha Haredi is a combat unit. We're talking about the soldiers that's going to the war and they are in the first line in the war. And so th this is a guy that's going uh, to sacrifice for the Israeli society, for the uh, Am Israel. So the difference between the modern Orthodox, uh, the Datilo Umi, to the Haredi, Datilo Umi, when he uh, was born, uh, the, the family are preparing him to the army and to be in the, Haredi, in the Israeli society. But uh, the Haredi community not. Mm -hmm. So if we want Haredi in the army, we must have the environment that can uh, uh, be open to the Haredi community. And uh, that's why we have Nakha Haredi. Nakha Haredi, it's a unit without girls, without uh, uh, all of the soldiers uh, needs to keep Shabbat, to, to put Yarmuka and to be, they have a, a, a three tefillot a day, Shachid in Parvit. They have uh, one hour every day that they can learn Torah. Um, but all of it, it's only uh, for the option for Haredi youth to be in the army. Uh, it's not the goal. The goal is to serve the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're giving the, the environment to the Haredi community. That's all. Mm -hmm. Wait, so I'm, I don't know if I understand. You said originally the Israeli army said they didn't want a Haredi unit. How did they, how did they convince them to, to open it up or to try this out? So they, they want Haredi in the, in the army. We're talking about Israel. Israel, everything is, uh, is uh, by the law. The law says that everyone needs to be in the army. Yeah. So, so even Haredi, especially the, the people that serve in the army, uh, they want the Haredi in the army, but it was a move that everyone understands that it's going to open a war 20, 21 years ago, because the Haredi community is not in the army. This is the effect. Mm -hmm. uh, so the army said, I don't want any problems now. Everything is good. Don't give me the, the, the problems to the army. Uh, but after a big push uh, of Rabbi Balchayim and, and, and his team, uh, the army, not only the army, there is a, a guy uh, uh, that was in the Ministry of Defense. Uh, he is a guy that uh, built the, the Givati Brigade. And after that, uh, Netzach Yehuda. Yehuda is Yehuda of the Vine. Netzach Yehuda is Nachal Haredi today. Let, let me explain about Nachal Haredi in one sentence. Nachal Haredi today, it's not only uh, Nachal Haredi Battalion. It's Nachal Haredi Battalion, 1,000 soldiers. This is, it's called today Netzach Yehuda. And we have a, a group in Tzanchanin group in Givati, group in, uh, in Air Force. We have group even in computers in the army. They're doing programming. Uh, and so we have a lot of soldiers, Haredi soldiers in the army. So Yudat of Devani, it's the guy that uh, was in the MOD, in, in Minister of Defense. And he said to Rabbi Bachaim, let me take, over, take care of it. I understand they have the fields, I want to do it. And they did it together and he pushed the army very strong. He's a strong guy. And uh, it's happened. Amazing. I love hearing about the people that can push these changes through. Um, you know, we have in a Jew in the City, a division called Project Makom um, for people raised Haredi that are looking for, you know, broader choices than what they were raised with. Um, why, I feel like you could speak to this issue probably. Why do you think it's important to offer? Sometimes I think the box in some places un is unnecessarily small. And the truth is that you could live a Haredi life with more options. So why do you think it's important that, um, you know, we offer Haredi youth more, more possibilities for their future. I have to say something. It's, it's different, the cultural in Israel uh, to America. Because in America, you can be a Haredi and you can work. Mm -hmm. In Israel, not. Hmm. All of the Haredi community in Israel, the, 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 uh, the frame is to be in the yeshiva, in the kollel. You don't go to work. If you're going to work, you, you're outside of the, of the, of the Haredi community. Uh, so today we are not trying to have the Haredi community in the army. But we saying, I was yesterday in the Knesset. I spoke to Ali Deli. We are very close. Ali Deli is the chairman of the Shaz. 
שאף זה the biggest group of Haredim in in Israel. שאף אני אדוק את התורה, if you know that, especially now after the election. So I spoke with him. He understands that we have to keep the Haredi community, and that's what he he does. But he understands today that we have to give the option for a lot of percentage from the Haredi youth to do something different because they are not going to be in the Yeshivot. So we are not trying to attack the Yeshivot, no. But we understand that there is a lot of percentage that they don't get the answer. There is no answer in the Haredi community except the army. So the army is a very good answer, you can come. That, that's our... Uh, and so after they go to the army, I know that army service in Israel is an important stepping stone for people's career. Are people going from Nachal Haredi then on to the workforce? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Of course, sometimes we're, we're trying to uh, send them back to the community, to the Haredi community after the army. But today we understand that it's more important to send them to academic and to, to learn degrees and, and to work because they need to be part of the Israeli society, but they still need to keep the values of the Haredi community. It's, it's very uh, hard to keep everything uh, in the same uh, uh, person, but we have a lot of success in the story. So can you give us some examples? I know you said there was the pushback from the army originally that they did not want this unit. Can you give us some examples of um, some non-religious Israelis that had a change of heart or saw you know, someone Haredi in a different light after they began to work with them through Nachal Haredi? Yeah, so um, if we will take the, the veterans of the Nachal Haredi, the, and we said we're talking about 14,000 veterans, we can see veterans everywhere in the Israeli society. We can see a member of the Knesset, Dr. Shlomo, Shlomo Karai, is one of our veterans. So if we take in, if we take in a, a, for example, a guy like him, he was in the, he started in the Haredi community, he learned in Kisar Hamim of uh, Rabbi Moses. And after that, he went to Nahal Haredi. After that, he finished the army. He understands that he's not going back to the Kuala. So he started the degree, second degree, and today he's a doctor, and he's a member of the Knesset. He is doing today more atzalat nefashot and more Torah and everything for the Israeli society, much more than, uh, I love my brothers, but maybe more than them. Mm. Uh, and, and by the way, my brother told me when I started the army that it's better to, I don't want to say it, but don't go to the army. Right. You cannot go to the army, never ever. I went to the army and I served. And today I said to my brother, I opened a coil, a midrash for the veterans before you. So there is a lot of what to do uh, with the Nahal Haredi and with the veterans, a lot of success stories, um, but it's a hard work uh, with the Haredi community not to attack, to explain them how much important the Nahal Haredi is. Do you feel like your family came around if they were trying to stop you? They thought that you were going to ruin your life, you're going to not be religious anymore. Do they see now what you've become, that you've maintained your Jewish standards and you know had your dream of being in the army? Did, have they learned to respect that you can do both? Yeah, sure. When I started, the, my, my father said that you have to be in the yeshiva and all of that. Uh, and at the beginning, he didn't come to the ceremonies. Mm -hmm. But after one year, uh, after one year and a half and two years, I finished the officer schools. He came with my mother, and I remember the the, the day that they came, and I got the outstanding something in the army, and my mother said that she's very excited. So today they understand that the army uh, gave, give me, uh, gave me a lot, and uh, maybe change, changed my life. I, I'm, I'm speaking about the, the Naha Haredi uh, like a revolution, real, real revolution. Most of the Israeli society understand it, but today, even the Haredi community, not the, the hard people, but most of the people understand it because this is a real revolution. This is a real bridge. We can speak to the Israeli society, to the Chilomim, to the unreligious people in Israel, but we're still keeping the Haredi values. Yeah. And we're still serving in the army. I'm going to the army every time. I was in Suketan uh, one day after the, the bleed of the, my, uh, my son and all of it. Uh, so, um, we're keeping it uh, as a bridge that can be between the, the community in, the communities in Israel. What percentage, if you could guesstimate, um, would you say are the guys that go into Nacha Haredi, how many of them have support from their families? And then over time, when they see what they've developed into and become, how many then families would you say percentage-wise change how they feel and become more supportive? 
First of all, let's speak about the, the uh, youth, Haredi youth that's coming to the army. Let's leave the yeshiva. We don't want to touch the yeshiva. They still ca can learn Torah. The uh, 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 youth people from the Haredi communities that's left the yeshiva, only one from nine comes to Nahal Haredi. Oh, wow. That's me, yeah. And, and, and all of the eight, they go into the drugs and a lot of problems, a lot. So this is a one uh, issue that uh, we're going to take care of uh, in, the, in the next uh, two years. We're going to open Mechinot and all of it. But second, the support of the families, it's, uh, it's very nice to see it. Because at the beginning, there is a lot of uh, problems with the families and the, the, all, the, all the families against the, the gius and, and all of it. But after one year, after two years, especially after the army, when they see the success of their sons, they have a lot of support. And even in this area, we have a lot of uh, work to do. If we're talking about lone soldiers, we have 3,000 soldiers. We have more than 800 lone soldiers. It's crazy. Hmm. So lone soldiers coming from the US or coming from other countries? No, no, no. No, no, no. It's a lone soldiers from this, but the difference yeah. between lone soldiers that comes from America, you have a family in America. These lone soldiers, they don't have families. We are their families. Uh -huh. Got it. So when you say they don't have families, meaning they're orphans or their families don't um, support them? The families don't support them. Got it. Okay. Uh -huh. they, and we can see it because they're doing all the Chagim with us, all the Shabbatot, all of the education with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more than 100 uh, lone soldiers in our apartments. We have a, a, a lot of apartments for uh, lone soldiers. And, and, and do the lone soldiers ever, be, does the number ever decrease because the families have come to accept them or not really? This is a hard question because if we, if we try to see what's happened in the, uh, over uh, 20 years, I don't see something that's uh, uh, so different. I, I believe in the, in the, in the Imra, and Chadash Tachatashem, it's nothing going to change. Right. Uh, we're going to see the Haredi community more open, but we're going to see a big group in the Haredi community that's going to be more against the army. And so everything is the same. We have to keep the, the option. And we can see we have 3,000 soldiers. It's going to be 6,000 in five years, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see the, 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 the change. But it's not going to be a change that we're going to see all of the Haredi community and the army, and we don't want it. Mm. And, and do the you, army don't need it. Has, right? has rabbinic support increased from the Haredi rabbis over time as um, this has become more successful and they've seen uh, the work that you've done? So the Haredi rabbis, first of all, everyone that you're going to ask private, you're going to get the answer that is support in, uh, when I was uh, 18 years old, my father went to Rabbi Ovadi Yosef, and he said to my father, we can uh, send them to the army, it's okay. Uh, he understood it, and when we started, not me, but Rabbi Bachem started uh, Nacha Haredi, he spoke with Rabbi Shtema. This is the, the Gdol Adol of the, of, the, uh, of the Haredi community, and he said that he, he, he is behind the, the project. Hmm. But yeah, he got uh, some uh, coalition and <laughs> opposition in, in his community. But uh, that's why today we have uh, Peleg Yerushalmi and all of it because of uh, Rabbi Steinman, that he was a little bit more liberal. But, but we can see the rabbis uh, that they are we have behind us. We have that Torah that's behind the Amuta and behind the, our activity. But I don't see ever, any option that the Haredi community will support the army because it, it's totally against the strategy of the Haredi community. The strategy said, like Pauline, like, like what the Haredi community did 1,000 years in Pauline, they keep the Haredi community uh, with a lot of chomot, uh, uh, with a lot of gderot uh, uh, between the Haredi community to everything, because they understand that this is the only option to keep the Torah, to, to keep the, the environment of the Haredi community. So, what and I, I, yeah. What about in school? Um, could it be possible in the yeshivas to sort of highlight more of the stories of the Jews as warriors? Because if you look at you know the Torah, you see so many stories of Jews in battle defending um, our land. So is that possible that by sort of highlighting those stories more through school, that sort of the model of the Jew is to learn Torah and to defend God, you know, the land that God gave us? Would that be any way to sort of um, quietly sort of make this idea seem more kosher or? By the way, yeah, you, I, I can take your question because this is our, this is my strategy in the, in the organization. 
uh, because we understand that we cannot fight anyone in Israel. We have yeah. to do everything quiet. Yeah. So, yeah. so we talk, we're calling it uh, the quiet revolution. We're going to do the revolution, but we have to be quiet. We're not fighting anyone. So uh, your question is very important. So I can tell you it's depend of the time uh, of uh, what's happened in Israel. Let's take Operation Kukitan or Milchemet Lebanon Ashnia, uh, the second uh, war of uh, Lebanon, Lebanon. So I remember that Hebron, the biggest yeshiva, the famous yeshiva in the, in the Haredi community, they took every, every uh, student in Hebron, took one name from the soldiers and learned for him every day. So this is the, the moment that all of the Israeli society are connecting together. They understand that we have the, uh, the same enemy. Uh, and we can see that even the Haredi community understand it. But let's put it on the table. We have to split between the Ashkenazim to the Sparadim. The Ashkenazim in, in the Haredi community, they are against the army. They're going to be against for the, for the next 10 years, for sure. Uh, most of them, the, the core, the, the kernel. Uh, but the uh, Sparadi community, Every Shabbat, they have Misha Berach. They have a, a place for the soldiers. So they have, they have the fields for the soldiers. They support the soldiers much more than, than the Ashkenazim community. And in the Haredi community, it's, this is the fact. There is different, some different. Um, so we can see it. Why do you, I mean, I've thought a lot about the differences between the Sephardic community and the Ashkenazi community. I find the Ash, uh, Sephardic community to be more sort of emotion-based and lots of feelings. Do you think right. it, it's those attributes that are making them more connected to the soldiers or more open? Or maybe Sephardic Jews are a little more chill and Ashkenazi were a little bit more uh, <laughs> uptight. Do, do you have a sense as to why the Sephardic community um, is more open already? When, when, you, uh, when uh, the, the, uh, the values that's uh, taking you every day is the emotion the values, like the Sephardic, Sephardic community, you can understand that they have the, the, the sense for the soldiers. They understand that it's a people, at the end of the day, everyone understands that soldier, especially in combat units, they go into the war. They sacrifice, the, they, they doing the, the best value that you can do. Uh, uh, the deputy of the, the chief of the army said to me one month ago, uh, uh, no one died in the, when, when he learned Gimor. And it's true. It's very impressive, very important when someone are, can learn from seven in the morning until 12 in the night, it's crazy. I, I, I really appreciate it, but no one dies on, on Torah. Right. And soldiers are going to die. When I was in villages, I understand that they can die. So everyone can understand that and can support it. But the Ashkenazim, more, it's more <laughs> by machshavot, but by thinking. So when they thinking about the strategy, they understand that they need to be uh, with a uh, frame, very close frame between, even, even between Ashkenazi to Chabadnik. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Chabadnik is outside of the community because he's not like the, by the book. Mm -hmm. He's not thinking by the book. This is the reality here. And, but today I think it's a little bit better if we can see it, but um, I can see it. I think it's the same. Everyone said, a lot of people said that there is different, but I don't see it yet. Not enough. And what about for the Haredi community, the Ashkenazi part that's Hasidic versus, you know, Litvish? Is there a distinction about um, how um, open or closed are, are the Litvish community more uh, open to this than the Hasidic population? So this is something uh, interesting. The, the Hasidic is more like Sparadi. The Hasidic. Yeah, yeah, they are, they, all, all of the, the, the goal of the Hasidim is to be more, uh, more with passion in Avodat Hashem. This is the Hasidic, uh, I, I don't know, maybe Hasidic Ashkafa. So they have more, more passion in Avodat Hashem, more passion in everything that they, what they're doing every day. So it's more close to the Sparadim. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you can see a soldier that's coming with all of the peot, with the, with the look of, uh, of uh, Hasidim, we can ask them, everyone, most of them, I'm trying to not say but everyone, but most of them went to the Admo before they came to the army and the Admo said, go to the army, I'm behind you. But mm -hmm. the Ashkenazim, never. When they go to, I don't want to say names of rabbis, but they're not going to say go to the army. Sometimes I can hear from mothers, not from mothers, from fathers, 
that it's better to not keep Shabbat and uh, to go to the army. Uh, it's crazy because they, it's, the, it's different values. They understand that they think that the army are changed all of the values. Uh, uh, my brother said to me that uh, from now your commander is Hashem and Hashem is nothing for you. So it's crazy. It's, uh, it's we, have about, uh, we have about three minutes left. So I want to just get kind of some closing thoughts from you here. Um, yeah. You mentioned something, uh, you know, 5,000 over the next six years or 6,000 over the next five years. What's the strategy for growth and for, you know, gaining more acceptance um, as time moves on five years, 10 years, and what numbers do you project in that time? So if you uh, following uh, what's happened in Israel in the government, so two, two uh, governments are failed because of the Gius Haredim, because of the, the law of Gius Haredim. Uh, so I can tell you that there is a, a goal for the government. They want more than uh, 6,000 in five years, I think. I don't remember the numbers. Uh, but I can tell you that we are not touching the numbers from any perspective because we have the back of the Haredi community on what we're doing. So we're not trying to, like I said, to take the Haredi community. I believe that it's going to double from the field. We don't want to, uh, we don't need to work hard for it. It's organic. It's an organic process. Yeah. For sure, it's going to happen. For sure, we can see that, that, that all of the uh, past with 20 years, you can see it's going up every day. You're basically, and this is how I think we call Project Mafam. We're not here for recruitment. We're here to catch people who are not fitting into the place where they started. And right. I think, although some but people, we have a lot of Mafam, a lot of Haredi uh, soldiers in Mafam, even now. Yeah. So, um, is there anything that our listeners can do to learn more or to support Nachach already? Do you have any needs that we can give our listeners as a call to action? Yeah, of course. We have we have uh, our website with a lot of information. We're still working on the English of the website, but it's uh, there is a lot of uh, data there. They can see uh, pictures from the field and a lot of uh, issues. They can write Nachach already organization. You will they can find uh, find our website. And uh, we have a lot of, uh, we're working with the news every day. We're trying to uh, put the position of the uh, Nakhon Khalid in a uh, very good uh, position. Amazing. Well, we wish you um, tremendous hatzlacha. Um, it's really beautiful work that you're doing. I think there's so much uh, shared uh, work that you know our organization is doing and, and yours is as well. Um, and only good things to come. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today and thank you so much for listening. You can catch us same time, same place next week. Bye-bye.